Come on, man. You can do this. Hi everyone, Anthony Fantano here, internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review. Nas, life is good. Nas is a New York rapper, and few rappers have had the impact on hip-hop that he has. And what's kind of funny is that his impact on the genre can really kind of be boiled down almost to one album, Illmatic. Fantastic LP. For most of you, I don't think I need to tell you why. And if you don't know why, just go listen to it. <laughs> now, in terms of what happened after Illmatic, Nas was still seeing commercial success, definitely. Selling tons of records, he had chart-topping singles as well, but he did kind of change his style up, embracing themes of excess and drugs and, and violence in his lyrics which did kind of turn off some fans and critics, which in a way is slightly hypocritical because throughout this time period when Nas was changing himself more toward this style, there were plenty of gangster rap and mafioso rap albums that were pretty popular, but a part of the reason why a lot of people dislike this change in Nas, and I have to say personally I agree for the most part, is it was kind of perceived as being a bit reactionary. Nas shifting, Nas doing something different in order to kind of stay relevant in the rap limelight. Now throughout the 10 albums that Nas has released, he's had his moments where he's fallen off and he's come back, but for me, after Illmatic, any failures or improvements that Nas ended up making, any comebacks, whatever, it's all relative. Because to me, <laughs> over time, Nas's instrumentals and his hooks and his song topics just continued to get worse. You know, and it wasn't even that Nas had changed or embraced the mainstream or anything like that. It's, it's, it's that he was never really even that good at it. He never really had the ear for beats and for hooks that Jay-Z did as Nas and Jay-Z were kind of evolving into the late 90s and the 2000s. Time and time again, Nas would water down his lyrical content, he would simplify a track, really kind of make it catchy, make it hooky, and it never really was, at least not in a long-term kind of way, because when I listen back to older singles that I remember being pretty popular at the time, like Got Yourself a uh, or Hate Me Now, they sound really kind of faded and dated today. Now on the albums that dropped after Nas's first two full-length LPs, he would have his his personal or his conscious moments for sure, but they were never really as as groundbreaking or as I guess fiery or as passionate as his early stuff. Now, does this new album kind of show Nas turning a new leaf? I mean, I would hope so. It's kind of coming off the coattails of, of two albums that were not really that stellar to begin with. And I mean, think about it. Nas really could experiment and do anything that that he wants at this point. I mean, he's been making albums for almost 20 years, and through all the highs and lows, he's still been relatively popular. People have pretty much always been interested in what he's putting out next. Why not do something different? Why not change everything up? His place in hip-hop is pretty solidified. But nope, that don't happen. Pretty much what you get on this LP is a slightly more modernized version of the same old, same old from Nas. Weak beat choices, bad hooks, song concepts that don't really fully connect, and a bunch of features that feel more political than they do logical or musical, like Rick Ross and Swizz Beats and Amy Winehouse. There are pretty much two kinds of tracks on this album. There are potholes and there are weaklings. 
The straight up rapping on the track Locomotive sounds pretty good, but I'm not totally in love with the the beat on the song. The beat on the track The Dawn, I actually think is, is the best instrumental on this entire album, but I'm not really in love with every single lyric Nas drops on that track. The track Queen Story would be a pretty decent song because it's it's got a nice storyline to it, but it just has this instrumental that sounds like it's coming straight out of Disney's Fantasia. The track Accident Murderers is another interesting song concept, but it doesn't really come together all that well. There's kind of a nice background to it talking about urban violence and, and, and its casualties and, and kind of second guessing the people who are the murderers to have done it intentionally to really be kind of man enough to do that kind of thing. But it's not exactly like Rick Ross stays on topic. He's rapping a little faster than he usually does, but it's pretty much, oh, car, oh, bitch. And then he turns the last line of his verse into a plug for his new album. The track Daughters on here is another interesting song concept, but I don't really feel like Nas brings it home or anything. Like, you do get this sense of, yeah, it's difficult being a father, raising a daughter in today's day and age, and he's talking about, you know, scandally clad pictures on Twitter, posting things that you really shouldn't be posting on Instagram, but it all just kind of comes off as, as being a little bit like comedic aggravation that you would see in a sitcom. I don't really get the sense of, oh man, this is a call to arms. This is a serious problem. And the track Summer on Smash? What a meaningless, trashy, just forgettable pop rap tune that nobody is going to care about in three years. Who's going to care about this song? Swizz Beats is probably going to take the instrumental from it and just use it somewhere else. If it's lucky, it'll get on a little Wayne mixtape next year. And there are a couple really just corny, tasteless throwbacks on here, like the song Reach Out with Mary J. Blige or the song You Wouldn't Understand. It's just oh, <laughs> sickeningly bad nostalgia. He can't get over just how like buttery smooth those tracks are. So, so. I kind of feel that way about the last track on here too, Bye Baby, which I feel like is even less of a song because compared to all the other tracks on here, the audio quality is almost kind of like a, an unfinished demo. I feel like the only thing that's salvageable about this album, aside from a couple instrumentals, is that you do kind of get some personal details from Nas or some personal feelings from him in regards to just his family life, his recent divorce. I do kind of feel for him and really kind of relate to him when those moments come up because I do get shots of, of kind of passionate details and emotion but when I hear tracks like Cherry Wine with Amy Winehouse that kind of see Nas just longing for love from this kind of ideal partner it's just coming off kind of lazy and unimaginative. What do you want what do you want me to say at this point? I'm not going to sit here and pretend to like this. You know, I love listening to music and I love talking to you guys about music I do, but I'm not going to not going to lie about whether or not I like something. I'm really kind of feeling a strong 3 to a light 4 on this LP. I'm sure a lot of you guys have heard it. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Why? And what should I review next? Anthony Fantano, Nas, forever.